And this is the connection that I think we can talk about now. It's basically the connection between enlightenment and health or awakening and health. So the more in a sense that you recognize the the wadat al wujud, the unity of all being, the unity of all existence, that deep interconnectedness of all, and also that source that you come from, that you are that, we are that, and that the more that you really embody that, that um, the impenetrable peace and the causeless joy, and you basically stay in that state and you make art from that state, the healthier you are on all your health biomarkers. Yes. Um, uh, you, you touch on something that's, uh, you know, what's uh, interesting is that illness medicine always demands proof, right? Uh, and that's because they're based on population based thinking, right? So, when you're, and you're talking about quantity, the quantity of people that have survived. Because see, they're after survival rates, right? They're, that's, that's their measure. The, the measure of the success of any intervention that they do is after survival rate. So they're after quantity. And for me, I'm after quality, right? Yeah. What's the quality? Uh, uh, one of the things that I learned early on um, in uh, medical informatics when I was... Uh, 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 doing, you know, uh, research on, on how much is the value of life and, uh, you know, in, in dollars, you know, how much is one life worth and all that. Yeah, we, we do those kinds of research. Those are done, right? Um, you, you don't know that uh, the actuaries and all of the people that uh, provide you with life insurance, those are all computed and those are all known, right? But um, when, you, when you look at all, all of this stuff, it's like, what is the quality of your life now? And the thing that I, I learned there is that there are outcomes that are worse than death, right? And we don't like to admit that, that there are outcomes wor worse than death, but that is already the finding of studies, what, in the 1990s, right? Uh, uh, we, we know that. And, and uh, you know, only the most ignorant of us, would, of, of doctors would say, well, I, have, I, have the, uh, I took an oath. Well, you know, that's, that's just for Hollywood, right? Um, so we, we already have established that kind of thing. So we now have to turn our focus on what's the quality of life that we're living. And the quality of life that you live is actually inside you, right? Yeah. Yep. I, I remember John Kabat-Zinn uh, wrote a famous book, right? Wherever you go, there you are. So, um, so what's, what's that status of the default mode network inside your brain? Are you, are, are you yes. too self-referential all the time? Um, but for me, it's like, uh, what is, uh, you know, how do you live life with a sense of equanimity? And um, yeah. I was asked this question one time uh, is uh, uh, by a psychiatrist. He said, Dr. Ted, you know, your health optimization medicine model, which is seven pillars, is just brilliant. But how do you include spirituality right, yes. in, in uh, health optimization? And I said, oh, you know, it's really very simple, right? Um, uh, you know that uh, DMT is called the spirit mo molecule. Yep. So just give the person DMT and you solve the spiritual imbalance. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so, it's the fastest so, um, way to just <laughs> obliter obliterate the ego, obliterate the ego and, and just melt, melt, right into the infinite consciousness, just melt yeah. right into it. And well, then hopefully you can re-baseline. The big thing is to re-baseline after entheogenic experiences, unleashing the divine within, but then can you re-baseline to that well, level? Of well, re-baselining re is actually done through practice, like a meditation exactly, practice. Exactly, or, exactly. Um, or other practices that actually um, point out to you the illusoriness of the self. Right. I, you know, ego is a very heavily laden term, you know, that's Freudian. It's your sense of self-importance. But uh, so I, I tend to use this self-referential system uh, more than I use the ego. But people understand the ego because it's everything from which everything is centered. Right. But that center is an illusion. Right. It's it's uh, it's just created by the brain. It's uh, it's part of a. Uh, uh, what evolved to give us a sense of continuity, but it's also the source of our suffering. 
And if you take a look at our website uh, for, you know, transcriptions is a brand of my company called Smarter Not Harder, right? And uh, if you take a look at um, our uh, mission there is to decrease suffering in ourselves and to decrease suffering in others, yes. knowing that there is no other. Exactly, right. beautiful. So, yeah. so, so we come to a definition of what's suffering, you know? Uh, for me, suffering is really very simple. Um, you know, in, in, in common parlance, for me, suffering is identifying with the self or, you know, getting lost with the thought. You know, you think the thought is you, right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, so uh, there is someone that's owning the experience. Obsessed it's with that all someone of the that layers of identity that we that we put but, on as as, as but, onion layers, yeah, and that we yeah, have but, ever peeled off. We gotta to feel the source, to feel it, and live from that source. Yeah, and and, and for me, you know, I'm I'm I have less grandiose plans. Uh, you know, uh, I have a simple definition of enlightenment, which is you know the cessation of suffering, and yeah, which is source yeah. of suffering. The source of suffering is the, the ego, which is an illusion anyway, that, is, that clings to or is averse to certain things. So it wants this, doesn't want that, wants this, doesn't want that. And soon all of those wants, wants, wants accumulate, right? You want more profits. You want more, therefore you're going to pollute the oceans more. And therefore you're going to use um, child labor more. Therefore you're going to, to uh, traffic humans more you know, all in the name of want, 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 right? So, and, and therefore, for me, that is suffering, you know? Uh, if you, the clinging and aversion of the ego is the root of suffering, right? Well, I, I, the Buddha I wanna, also says ignorance, right? Yes, ignorance yes. Of there, there, there's, a, there's a balance here, and I'm, I'm curious how you align with this idea. It's called like the dreamed symphony in the sense that the infinite consciousness creates the dreamed reality that is that is this and then there's the multiverse which is all of the dreamed realities this is just one observerse and there's many other observerses happening an 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 infinite amount of illusory finity in a sense that is happening and so here you here here we have this this um dimensionless singularity that is uh, indivisible and it's indescribable the 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 Tao that can be named is not the eternal Tao. okay so we have that and then now we are the um the, the dreamed symphony and so here's the symphony that's happening now in the symphony i'm playing the violin but you're playing the trombone and then someone else is playing the clarinet and someone else is playing the cello and we're all playing different melodies and different harmonies and people that are playing out of tune are people like you described that are suffering they're still suffering they're still in the service to self mentality and people that are playing in tune are playing in the service to other mentality everything's in service they they've they've a clear gnosis of the divine that they are and what and what's going on they're very clear um seer of truth consciousness how do you resonate with that dreamed symphony analogy man that's fucking heavy I, I, <laughs> but, but I, I, I mean the one thing that i you know, I, 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 you know, I, I, I told you I was just with, with friends here. And one thing that I usually totally inject into all of these things is levity. You can never be too fucking serious about anything, right? Yes. And, yes. you know, I, I, you know, my pedigree is in neuroscience and I'm still a neuroscientist and even I, I'm a physician, you know, even in, uh, in, in uh, as a physician, I still deal with the brain. So, Let's bring down, uh, so for me, right, right now we're trying to, there's a $20 million uh, prize now, the Templeton, to, yeah. to, um, uh, to uh, uh, elucidate the, the uh, mechanism of consciousness, right? Yeah. Yeah. And one is the causal um, uh, 
uh, model, which is the integrated information theory, right? And one is the causal model um, or the non-causal model, which is the global work workspace theory, mm -hmm. among others, right? Uh, you know, because my interest uh, in this is still in, in consciousness. And then there's, of course, you know, um, philosophers, you know, the, the, you know, they say, well, maybe it's a panpsychism, whether yeah. or not it's inherent or emergent panpsychism, you know, you don't know who wins, right? But, you know, my thing is, this is fun. And this is yes. my answer to your question. Yes. My answer to your question. Uh, ever since I was a kid, all the way to now, so my first uh, experience, with uh, ayahuasca, for example, it, it's as if a rug was pulled from under me as a strict scientist, you know, just looking at the world with this, you know, and then you, it's yes. as if a rug is pulled out under you yes. and suddenly you see that there are dimensions out there yes. that uh, were unavailable for you before, right? Yes. So, yes. so uh, and then it's easier for you to actually um, realize that the self is an illusion, you yeah. know, and then now physics is saying that space time, we're losing space time to be, it's an illusion, right? Yeah. And we, we now have, uh, have people uh, saying that all we're doing in this world is like, we are just a user interface with fitness functions. That's Donald <laughs> Huffman, right? Uh, we evolved, we see an apple, we see this, only because that's, you know, that's our user interface in order to, to, to uh, execute our programs or survival and reproduction, right? And uh, so, uh, but, but for me, the sight guys, the spirit of everything else is a fucking game. Yes. You know, you, when you, you best enjoy the game, you know, when, when you, um, an uh, MMORPG, massive multiplayer yeah. online role-playing game. Yeah. And, and, yeah th this is what I, this is what I say, you know, um, it's very difficult to convince people unless they have done programming that what you believe in is not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but the, the, the biggest punch, that I give them is that when you were a kid, you believed you believed in Santa Claus, right? Mm -hmm. And then you were able That's to right. shed that belief. That's so right. Other beliefs are, are harder to shed, yeah. right? And yeah. when you're programming, for example, if you set a global variable, if you set that God is true, then do the following. If Jesus Christ is true, then do the following. If if you know Gautama Buddha is true, then do the following. So you could see that you know whatever it is that's set in there that's right it's yeah right. it's 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 programmatic right yep. it's, it's, it's programmatic super programmatic right? but but that but that's hard for us to accept right because it's, it's easier if you take an integral view so when when you when you embrace all that is and especially all eight billion of these individual yeah. players and what they see as true as their scripts if you have an that, that's important as their script. scripts yeah. but the thing yeah. is they cannot see beyond the script right? if, and they, if they we can augment their awareness beyond the script to the integral embrace of this beautiful mystery and expressing unique gifts then we are into that more harmonious world our hearts know is possible yeah that's why can i combine some molecules that can balance the default mode network and the past past not past positive network in such a way right that it is evident to you that there needs to be no owner of the experience, right? That there, yeah. um, that it is there only so that you, it provides continuity for you to have a story every day because that's what allowed you to survive in evolution, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's embracing that, but going beyond that, right? Yes, yes. And when we notice that, I, I, I tell people this, that's why I, I, I tell people, you know, all of us should be educated after evolutionary biology, evolutionary psychology, we should be educated in evolutionary game theory. We don't yeah. realize that much of our behavior is dictated by that, you know? By why zero do we sum why, dynamics, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, why is, it, why is the tit for tat game, why is it successful yeah. all the time, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and so on. Like, like, but people will go, huh? Those are very difficult concepts, right? 
we need to know, tell better that, stories, which links us to the very beginning. When we tell better stories, it's, it's, it's science, hard. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell engaging stories in science, right? Unless you engage them, and when when well, I'm, well, we have to tell the story, the big metaphysical story that is like, in a sense, like the Harry Potter of of you know, like that. Like when we can do that, then we can really inspire that. The awakening. Uh, for yeah. example, you know, um, uh, right now, you know, we don't distinguish when we're teaching kids, we don't distinguish between, you know, teaching them religion versus teaching them spirituality, which are two <laughs> different things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We just shove in them and the same in we, these types yeah, of, yeah. of religious neurosis. And they yeah. end up having the same re religious neurosis as when I'm there's a very water. clear baby in the bathwater that we can lift up y and yes. yeah and bring up yes. with the and, spirituality. And that requires and and uh, uh, you know it requires a lot of good stories told, like a yeah. lot of education. Yeah, it requires a and, lot of education. Well, or or what we can do is we can say, okay, how can we take that what looks like a lot of education? How can we compress that down Pareto efficient into a couple of you know stories that can really awaken people? I think we can do that, and that's pretty much what not only this project um, is that will be. Oh, I, I, I don't months, know, Alan. If it's just on me, I'm kidding. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but no, but th this is why we are so passionate also about the space of, um, you know, what like Los Angeles is doing with able to um, put together like the best animated content as well. Like why is, you know, Pixar's like Inside Out so popular or why is um, like Rick and Morty so popular in that sense. Can we make it into, you know, or like SpongeBob SquarePants for like the, the kids? Like, wh how can we tell a story that's so deeply, or like Game of Thrones and Harry Potter, that's so deeply interwoven with metaphysics, though, um, and that animation and storytelling? Yeah. That's what we're passionate about in 2021. Yeah. You, you, you can also do the flip side, right? Yes. I, it, tell, what um, is that? What my, is my, that? My, 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 my friends know that I have an allergy to stories because they have always fucked us up. <laughs> you know, if they're just, we are predisposed to stories. That's why we have all of these conspiracy theories. We were born to gossip and, and, and so on. Um, uh, you can also do the flip side. Uh, like we can teach uh, children to meditate earlier, to yeah. have a practice earlier in a neuroscientific way, right? here is how you observe the contents of your consciousness, right? That is part of what I'm describing in terms observe, of the metaphysical story. Yeah, observing, yeah, yeah, yeah. observing the contents of your consciousness, right? Uh, uh, early, right? Yes, yes. Realizing that the self right. is just another right. content of consciousness. Attention itself is another arising in consciousness. So you see yes. all of these arisings in consciousness. And especially when, when you teach them to kids before they develop that that uh, hardened sense of ego ego you know, i want this i don't want that i aversion. want this I want that, that yeah. is they have this skill to take a look at their desires and aversions and say okay should will i follow this desire or will i follow will will i get rid of this because i'm averse to it a meta there, consciousness yeah, yeah there there yeah. is a pause that happens right before they actually act there's behave. that pause and so, in that pause the entire destiny of your life outcome in the world it happens yes. at that pause yeah yes uh, because uh, maybe it's you're gonna scream and yell at someone who is going to be you know the most influential figure in your life and you lose it right so yes. so it gives you that that uh you know it gives it stops you from being reactive into being responsive yeah. And all it takes is being able to examine. And for me, it's just a simple skill. It's, it's difficult. It's a difficult skill. That's why you can turn it into a mental game, right? Uh, of of uh, being able to identify your thoughts, it's an emotions. In and, investigation and into the nature <laughs> of your being. And Rupert Spira uses a very good modern day analogy, which is the simple screen. Because if you think about that infinite consciousness as your being as that screen, and then having all of the different cravings and aversions and scenes that come up of the illusory multidis multiplicity and diversity of objects and people, as as the as the 
scenes in the screen in the movie that you realize that you are that blissful eternal infinite screen that's always having these different um slices of the movie so i yeah you're right though that that first principle at the young age you know there's so many indigenous cultures around the world like the baby in their bath water is the fact that they have what you described which is that depth of of truth that depth of interconnection that depth of unity that depth of understanding the nature of their own mind and you know Buddha was one of the best uh, indicators and Adi Shankara was another uh, massive one, Ramana Maharshi. These, they were excellent at, um, at that investigation. So, and-, and I, I mean, infants are, are, are fantastic. They're great until we fuck them up, right? Yeah. <laughs> because they are you know, evolutionarily and, uh, and uh, biologically programmed, right? And then we begin the sociocultural programming with education. You know, uh, with um, uh, uh, education, with what the par- how the parents raise them, with uh, uh, you know the the environment that they're in. So they're continuously getting programmed. And yes. uh, in fact, what, one of the things that I um, uh, interesting. Encourage- so the script being the most open and integral, and understanding the nature of mind and reality at the youngest age. That's great. Yeah, and 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 uh, also, you know, uh, aside from from uh, said going going the opposite, uh, in, it's teaching kids, you know, how to examine the contents of their consciousness and why they need to do so. It's an essential skill that will not make them suffer in the future. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Because they know that they're just arisings in consciousness, right? And the other thing is, when it's too late for you, what I say is that. Um, you know, uh, when you're 21, 22 years old or whatever, just go out and, and try to examine all of the beliefs that were placed in there by your yeah. parents, by your siblings, by your teachers and everything and see if they're still working for you. Yes. You know? yeah. uh, all the lines uh, those, of code. Yeah, yeah th- those, 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 uh, those may not be yours. Right. Yeah. That's uh, right. As I say, you know, you can set something false. You can, or, or my favorite is if you don't need the variable anymore, you put a semicolon to it. Yeah. Right? Archive, like archive some code and update that with some new lines that are it's, more integral. Yeah. Yes. And, and then, barring that, if you're still old, older, it's like what kind of molecules can we use in order to break through that? Right. So yeah. you have. Yeah. G- you have uh, uh, psilocybin, you have MDMA, you know, you have all of these things that can break through, uh, which is, you know, uh, they're used therapeutically, but they're also consciousness raising molecules. You know, they're they are. non-addicting consciousness raising molecules. They're not addicting because they don't raise your dop- dopamine at all, right? Yeah. You, we know the mechanism. We, we know the mechanism for addiction, right? So, so there's no more reason why they say, oh, these are because they cause addiction. They won't, Yeah. Right? Uh, the hack, was, hacking your script. I, um, I, I, yeah. I don't know of anyone who would like to take uh, ayahuasca for fun, right? Yeah, um, we, do yeah it although, to, we do it to hack our script. That's yeah. why we do it. Yeah, yeah. Al- al- although, you know, I hacked ayahuasca to my version of it called pharmawasca because I didn't Farmawasca. want to vomit, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah it's, which it's, is the future. The Nova. Yeah, it's the no vomit ayahuasca because I, I yeah yeah I, I couldn't for the life of me just you know yeah uh, continue vomiting. But these are the, the you know these are the kinds of, of things that are available you know um, on the flip side of uh, telling stories is you know uh, educating children, uh, teaching them how to to, to meditate and uh, you know uh, and making it a practice and making it a habit for younger people to examine the contents of their consciousness right Beautiful. for us it's difficult but if you start them young it's easy for them because yes. it's like seeing your optic blind spot as sam harris likes to say you know yeah. once it's pointed out to you you cannot you know not remember seeing it right yeah. and then uh there's this uh, period where there's a time where you should examine what beliefs are in there and you know uh, and then we have now this uh, um, uh, psychedelics that allow us to investigate our mind and uh, allow us to change uh, our scripts uh, and so on. And uh, for me, it's, uh, as I like to say, those are like 
bodybuilding steroids. Now you use them only for a while. And then after that, you will have to do the exercises yourself yeah. off yeah. cycle. Right? Yes, you still yes. have to have a continuous exactly. practice. And, and that's how, you know, for, for me, like, yes, we're advancing in the world and, and so on, but are we alleviating the suffering of people? So yes, we have all of this high tech stuff and we have all of this biometrics and so on and so forth. But fundamentally, you know, uh, I'm not even saying uh, anything about happiness. You know, we're not wired for happiness. We're wired for survival and reproduction. Happiness is an inside job. But for me, happiness is not suffering. So, so if we can teach, it's a, it's a skill that can be learned, right? Um, observing the contents and not being identifying, as you said, not identifying with the ego or not identifying with the self-referential system and knowing that things just arise. You know, these are just neural networks that fire. You know, um, as I like to say, as a neural network guy, you know, when you see something, your, your uh, visual neural network fires. When you hear something, your auditory neural network fires, you know, and it is in the same space where your uh, thoughts arise. There are also just neural networks firing, where your emotions arise, your limbic system uh, neural networks are firing. They're all just neural networks firing. And if you could see that, that when, when they fire in such a way that there is, it seems that there is someone orchestrating them, that's where we actually get fucked up, right? When, they, when we, when we, when we uh, when we um, uh, begin to own that we can control these things. That's why the most difficult thing in meditation, right? Is like, I want to control my thoughts. No, you can't. You have allowed them to go, right? Uh, and see that they, they disappear. They appear in the same space of consciousness as everything else. As what you see, what you hear, uh, you know, what you feel, you know, uh, the pressure in your body, the concept of you having a face uh, and so on. They're all appearing in the same consciousness Space as where thought arises, where emotion arises. And it's a skill, you know, that can be taught to, to be able to see the arisings of those. And you could see suffering decrease. And when suffering decreases, then you could see creativity arises, right? Because you're not craving for something anymore, right? You are, you are uh, in equanimity. Yeah. Right? As, I, as I, I tell people, I don't like extreme happiness and deep whirlpools of sadness. I just like, you know, uh, gentle waves of things. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so when, you learn, when you learn that, then you, you know, you can gamify it if yeah. you want, right? Yeah. Uh, you we have friends that are doing thing. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, uh, and, and so you begin, you begin not to take yourself seriously exactly that's the levity piece yeah i agree i agree <laughs> you begin not to take yourself seriously um yeah. you begin to see well you know what purpose you know it's like you said whatever purpose you like you know uh, mm -hmm. and so on. it's like uh, you, you know uh, we we grow up thinking that you know there is purpose and meaning and, and so on and so forth and you realize like no you're the one setting all of that so you set your script properly you set your script Amen. Yeah. You <laughs> set your script. One more time. You set <laughs> you your script. Set your script. script. However, you should be aware from where the script is coming, is coming from. You are yes. talking about the source. Exactly. Right? Where does, from where does the script arise? Beautiful. Right? Beautiful. From where does before the script you could set the script. Then, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and when there's fucked up scripts in there, man because it's fucked up code it's 100 percent <laughs> your ability 100 percent. you can like you said contemplate what is written in there and um go through the experiential practices there's all these modalities to for for that that exists now Ted. Yes. yes okay that last last thing yeah go ahead don't believe in what you think right i have this thing where i always say um um, and this would be a good end to your, uh, our podcast here. Yes, yes. Don't think, feel. Yeah. Don't feel, be. Be. Right? Yeah. I love it. So I don't love think it. that you are love. Don't feel that you are love. Be love. Be. Mm. 
Mm. And then we just butterfly effect that out all over. I love that. I love it. Uh, That's a logo of Home Hope, by the way. Yes, it is. Yeah, I know. I know. 